In this video, we take a look at the latest XRP news. Will XRP be able to fly to the moon? Write answers in the comments. Empower Oversight Whistleblowers as Research, a rigorous watchdog organization, has spearheaded another incisive Freedom of Information Act, FOIA, endeavor in what could be described as a relentless pursuit for granular transparency regarding the Securities and Exchange Commission's Psi PU prior actions regarding cryptocurrencies and Ripple. This strategy is geared on clarifying Jay Clayton's interactions with a pantheon of parties considered essential to the SEC's often controversial Bitcoin enforcement approaches. Clayton's tenure as the SEC's most powerful chair, which lasted from May 4, 2017 to December 23, 2020, included a number of landmark occurrences. At the forefront was Clayton's declaration of Bitcoin's non-security status, which was shared by other top figures about other. Bill Hyman delivered his notorious lecture in which he argued that ETH is decentralized and hence not a security. Hyman violated the advice of other authorities with the speech, as disclosed in the legal dispute between Ripple and the SEC. These allegations have a significant amplifying impact on the dynamics of these digital assets' worth. This upward trajectory, however, was hampered by the SEC's unexpected legal onslaught against Ripple, which questioned the XRP token status as a security. When paired with Clayton's later affiliation with One River Asset Management, a hedge fund with an exclusive portfolio emphasis on Bitcoin and Ether, this lawsuit fueled speculation. Among these swings, Empower Oversight issued a firm statement. Empower Oversight has submitted a new Freedom of Information Act FOIA request seeking communications between Jay Clayton regarding the agency's ostensible misalignment in cryptocurrency enforcement stratagems. Empower Oversight tries to dramatically widen the nexus of persons possibly enmeshed inside Clayton's contact environment in the convoluted structure of this newly minted FOIA petition aimed to Raymond Misinernene, the sexy's main FOIA custodian. The database, which includes names like Jasmine Burgess and John D'Agostino, seeks to identify any hidden conflicts of interest entwined within Mr. Clayton's Sikh stewardship. The whole issue has not gone ignored by crypto stakeholders. When I first raised the huge conflicts of interests, I was called a conspiracy theorist by many in the industry. Renowned Proc Sherp attorney John E. Deaton reminisced on X, previously Twitter, Empower Oversight found emails demonstrating Hyman violated 18 USD 208 many times with Clayton's full knowledge and implicit permission. Is Empower Oversight also a conspiracy theorist? Let's not forget, Clayton was the only commissioner to see and read the draft speech before it was delivered, Deaton said. Hyman did not transmit a copy of the letter to Hester Pierce. That's correct, crypto. Mom was not informed about the most important speech in crypto history. Ripple seems set to win a decisive victory in its legal fight with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC. As a result, the corporation just engaged a well-known lawyer to assist with that aim. James K. Fialan, a defense lawyer and former federal prosecutor, revealed on X, Twitter, that Rahul Mookie would defend Ripple and its CEO Brad Garlinghouse in their current dispute with the SEC. Mookie has extensive expertise in the sector, having worked as an assistant United States attorney from 2010 until 2016. He then joined the multinational legal firm Cleary Gottlieb Steen Hamilton LP Sistine Hamilton LP as a counsel and partner. Mookie has overseen key cases, including financial and tax fraud, public corruption, cybercrime, money laundering, and organized crime during the last decade. The SEC filed a complaint in December 2020, alleging ripple of trading billions of dollars in XRP as a securities without registering with the commission. The intense struggle progressed through many phases throughout the years as both entities fired bullets at one another. However, Ripple seems to have a significant edge since, in July, a U.S. court found that the majority of its XRP sales did not represent an offer of investment contract. The community that supports the blockchain startup Ripple has opted to celebrate the earlier partial triumph this weekend, even while the rest of the cryptocurrency world is waiting for the formal conclusion of the judicial fight that has been going on between Ripple and the United States. Securities and Exchange Commission for quite some time. Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse, Stu David Schwartz, legal experts Jeremy Hogan, and John E. Deaton, and a great number of other people were present at the proper party, which took place on September 30. This event brought together not only XRP and Ripple enthusiasts, but also people who were closely involved with the ecosystem and the lawsuit itself. Right before the party, Garlinghouse shared a few images with the audience that was gathered outside the venue and said that this event was a celebration of collective accomplishment and a reminder to the sect that court decisions matter and that progress is worth fighting for. He went on to say that this event was a celebration of collective achievement and a reminder to the sect that court decisions matter and that progress is worth fighting for. When giving his speech during the event, which also featured a star performance by Lenny Kravitz, Garlinghouse said that it was this village that it was this village that it beat the bully, referring to the XCRP and Ripple community and its stand against the regulator, in a video that was shared in an X post by Cryptolaw on September 30. He said this in a video that was shared in an X post by Cryptolaw. Earlier, Cryptolaw published an article produced by Frank Francone a policy others at the Centennial Institute and a California attorney. 
In the piece, Francone stated that the sex central argument failed almost completely under judicial scrutiny, which caused harm to a lot of innocent people in the process, and not just the defendants in the case. Crypto Law also stated that the sex actions had harmed a lot of innocent people in the process. As the creator of Crypto Law, John E. Deaton also pointed out in a comment he made on Francone's arguments in the article headlined, The sex is not the king. 75 VEC investors, users, developers, and small businesses have been screaming the above for three years, which was published in an ex post on September 28. In the meanwhile, a lawyer named Bill Morgan brought attention to the disparities in the sex arbitrary enforcement by noting that Mark Berger was pro crypto when it came to Ethereum, ETH, and its co founder Joseph Lubin. But while he was deputy director of the Division of Enforcement, he sued Ripple. More recently, on October 1, Jeremy Hogan emphasized that back in the early 1980s, the sex had attempted to pull the same thing as with XRP, but with gold, when inflation was high, and gold was the investment, and that the courts had put a stop to it at the time. Ripple's chief legal officer, Clo, Stuart Alderotti, has joined the chorus of those expressing dissatisfaction with sex chair Gary Jensler's appearance before Congress. As Ripple continues its legal struggle with the Securities and Exchange Commissions, SEC, over the categorization of XRP, Alderity examines Gensler's statements during the hearing, notably his evasive replies on the subject of securities under us law. According to Alderity, Gensler seemed to smugly evade question after question, which irritated numerous members of Congress. The Ripple Clo, on the other hand, emphasizes a specific moment when reps Richie Torres of New York's 15th Congressional District tried to put Gensler on the spot. Rep. Torres highlighted concerns throughout the hearing about the sexy's wide understanding of a investment contract, which seems to include whatever the agency sees proper. Torres especially questioned the SEC chair on its use of the concept to classify practically all cryptocurrencies as securities, a move that Ripple and Coinbase have strongly opposed. Rep. Torres cited a recent study by six prominent legal experts, including a Yale University professor, that found no Supreme Court judgment has ever treated a scheme without a real contract as an investment contract as an investment contract. When he questioned Gensler whether there had been any earlier Supreme Court instances in which an investment relationship was held to be such in the absence of an express contract, the SEC chair's answer was evasive. Gensler elected not to respond directly, Instead, referring to the sex lawyers who are now engaged in pending legal proceedings. Rep. Torres called Gensler's dodge baffling, given that the investment contract concept is the foundation of the sex legal proceedings against cryptocurrency related firms. It remains to be seen if other cryptocurrency firms engaging in legal battles with the SEC would follow the congressman's logic in future court trials. As the ripple, SEC fight continues. The sex chair's testimony emphasizes the need for clarity and uniformity in the categorization of digital assets in the U.S. legal framework. The unique viewpoint created here provides light on the criticism made at sex chair Gary Gensler by exposing his evasive comments and challenges to support the sex's broader definition of an investment contract. The SEC filed an interlocutory appeal with the court after Judge Annalisa Torres ruled that programmatic XARP sales did not constitute as securities. This meant that the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, did not agree with the verdict, and although the court accepted the interlocutory appeal, pro-XARP lawyer John Deaton termed the action ludicrous as he dismantled the SEC's case Deaton discussed the sex's interlocutory appeal in a piece titled The Irony of Interlocutory Appeal, the essay, which was published on the Crypto Law website on Thursday, September 28, outlines how the appeal filing might wind up favoring Ripple. The pro XRP lawyer notes that Judge Torres's decision to approve the request for appeal was anticipated, and the argument was that such an appeal would allow the judge to clarify her reasons for deciding in favor of Ripple. 